You're listening to the Spark Radio Network. All right, guys, we're ready for our four season sunroom, and Daddy's gonna get a rec room with refreshments. Oh no, we'll be sleeping under the stars. Mom, what about the one with, you know, the fun? Nice try, little bro. It's a gym. My gym. Hey, Grandma's getting her Four Seasons garden room. Weather tight and still like being outdoors. Maybe a living room. Oh, no, wait. A family hub. Yeah. yeah. No matter what the budget, the season, or the climate, Four Seasons sunrooms let you and your family enjoy the outdoors inside. Call now to receive your free, no-obligation brochure from the premier manufacturer of Sunroom since 1975. More reasons for four seasons now. To find out more, call toll-free 800-928-7007. That's 800-928-7007. Call 800-928-7007 today. Happy Thursday. I This is Lou, Lou Bell, and uh, this is for whom the bell tolls, or so they say. And tonight, I believe that the bell is tolling for Dr. Ander- Arrington, among other people. How are you, Dr. A? Okay, I'm back off of mute. You were handling me earlier, and now I guess I can talk, so I'm off mute. I'm happy to be here, Lou Bell. It is my job to handle you. That is what I do. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want to call you Lou Bell. Your name is Wench. Yeah, so you can call me either. Winch. You can call me either, uh, but I've not got, too many people get away with tonight. it. I've got like some uh, important people coming on to talk about serious national security issues because I think that's what the people want to hear. Is that, I don't even have any idea who you're going to start talking tonight. We definitely do. So let's just talk about what we have going on tonight. I would welcome everybody to K98 Talk and the Spark Radio Network. We're so glad to have you, and we've got some. Really cool things coming up tonight. Ghost Sec is going to come on, and uh, we're going to have a comedian on. Come on and tell us about the Op Beast campaign that they're running that is a little bit different for them. And I found myself fascinated by, by it because it is different. And um, it's actually an Op Beast, which is an anti bestiality camp uh, operation that they've been running for quite a while but they have a, a campaign going on right now to actually get laws changed which is uh, not their usual area of work but it's fascinating we're going to go through a little bit of the non-comment on the state of the union address regarding isis which is a, a fascinating thing i think the lack of comment was a lot more fascinating than any comment that was made. And then we're going to talk about the Iranian uh, abduction of, and I'm going to call it an abduction because you know I believe that it is, but the Iranian abduction of the U.S. sailors and the U- to the two patrol boats and uh, what just doesn't really ring true. And I know that, Dr. A, you have some great information on that. And you have a great background to talk about it. And we're going to talk a little bit about SEER training and uh, what you could tell yourself from the interviews, the kind of capitulation interviews that they always do with um, any kind of POW or, or anything like that. So you're you going see, to... when you say the, the acronym SEER, it sends a chill up my spine, as it does to every... Uh, individual United States Navy who's been through SEER school, SEER training. Right. And that's what it's designed to do. Just yeah, exactly. that much fun, isn't it? No, it was not fun. <laughs> yeah, no. I know. I know. So uh, we're going to talk, and we're going to talk in depth a little bit about 
the SEER training and what you know about this particular naval incident because we're lucky to have you. Um, and, you know, it's not that it's not that often that we get to, well, it seems like it is more often than not these days, but uh, we're trying to get um, our ghost set guy on the phone. Is it uh, the guy, is it GoSec or GoSec.org? It's GoSec. Yeah, are you there, Kamidi? Yeah, how are you? Uh, uh, good, how are you? So we got him on the line. I thought it looked like he picked up. Um, thanks for joining us tonight to talk about Op Beast. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, we've got Dr. No. Arrington on the line as well. So we're just going to jump in and start asking you some questions. Um, all right. All right. If you need me to repeat something or uh, you need to stall, just tell me to say it again. <laughs> so, right. so GoSec has actually been running Op Beast, um, op, the Op Beast operation for quite a while. Well, it's, GoSec isn't running it. It's it's ran by. Uh, Anani Op Beast and Priscilla Laker V. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're just kind of, I'm a big opponent to the whole bestiality thing. So I decided to like maybe give her a hand and and uh, my ghost sick brothers and sisters are against it. So I think we're just kind of, you know, we're going to, we're going to try and do what we can to help and, and get some laws changed. Right. And which is something that's a little bit different <clears throat> for the way Anonymous runs operations. They don't necessarily really go after the political end of it and try to get laws changed, right? Right. And that's, I think that's what sets this apart so much is, is that uh, there, there are several countries in, in Europe, uh, there's, several states in the United States that there's no law in the books at all about bestiality. I mean, it's it's legal. You can go out and you can jump on your horse or your sheep or whatever and, and there's, so no, there's no penalty. Yeah, okay. So to speak. And I, uh, I find that uh, incredible. I find that incredible if that's the truth. I, I, well, I can't believe. I'm sure it's true. I just can't believe it. It's such an incredible thing. It is. Well, like, the first state yeah. that they're the first state that they're going after is Texas, and we know for a fact there is no law on the books against bestiality in Texas. Uh, right? Uh, yeah. And we're what 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 we wanted to try to do with the campaign is is I, we're going to have tweet storms. We're going to have uh, informational tweets. We're going to tweet at senators and congressmen and within the state and federal level and see if we can, you know, we're more or less going to lobby these guys, you know, because th there should be something on the books. It's disgusting. I mean, the only real law there is against bestiality is federal law 18 U.S.C. 2256, which says you can't have sex with an animal if you're a minor. Okay. And that <laughs> that makes <clears throat> what I, I when I first heard about that, I was just kind of like, okay, I guess when you're over eighteen, you can, you know, in well, certain states, do your thing. Well, something that you've said really jumped out at me, and I think that it's it's probably one of the best messages that I've seen around any Op Beast campaign, which was the animals can't consent. So basically it's an unconsensual right. sex. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that's a really good point, And I think it's one that's worth driving home for one thing. And um, the hashtag is Op Beast, O-P Beast. Right. And everybody can get involved and help spread the word. And we've done a lot of things like this, committee, where um, and during the the Trans Pacific Trade Partnership uh, debates and the votes in Congress, 
you know, some groups were really actually able to sway some of those votes. So it's not like it's it's impossible, especially at the state level. So it's certainly an impossible thing. And, um, you know, I, I think everybody out there should, should want to help you out. But you said that the account at Anani Beast is actually running uh, this campaign. Right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and... And as GoSec, we're we're just kind of helping out. You know? Right. We, so, we want to help spread the word, and this isn't something that we can do. You know, so. Right. Exactly. Uh, and you guys have been involved in um, other op op based operations as well. You've done other things with op based, right? Right. And we've jumped around. You know, some of us have. I've done a little work with like Op Sea World and Op Fun Kill, and and we're all animal lovers, so uh, we, we're trying to do our part, you know. But another another interesting thing about the hashtag is we are going to start using the hashtag one state at a time, and we're gonna we're gonna go completely balls to the wall on every state that, that has this legalized in it until we can see some kind of change. Do, do you know how many states it is? There's eight. Eight total. states that it's, uh, it's, it's not legal, it's just not criminalized. Right, right. Yeah. And, and what's, what's, what's another interesting fact about this is it's all the states that are against same-sex marriage, too. Ugh. Which is which is really odd. I find that that odd correlation as well. I saw I saw you tweet that, and um, it's actually, a great arguing point. A great arguing point. Wait well, a minute, it is, how can you be against a, this? But but for that, I can or not against this. Right. Yeah. I, right. I can marry a sheep, but not a man. If oh, I'm a man, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it, it it's strange, but I I found that an odd correlation as well. It's a very odd odd correlation so when did this start how long has it been going on a week or two longer yeah, well the 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 deal with texas has been going on about a week or two where we're just kind of uh, gathering information and and who we need to contact and we're gonna we're gonna throw up some actual petitions so that we can get them signed and get them to members of the house or whatever and and see if we can, you know, actually get them to even discuss this on the floor. So, right, uh, that We'd... that would be huge for us if if we could even get a discussion started with some of these people. Yes, because it doesn't seem like anybody wants to even talk about it, and that is what that's what I don't understand. That's what I found more incredible than anything is that. Once they realize that there's nothing on the books, and therefore you, people are using that um, really to abuse animals. I mean, let's let's be honest. Right. It's it's animal right. abuse that they don't want to talk about doing something to change it. And I know that it's been tried it's, before. Yeah, it's 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 rape as far as I'm concerned, and. And I, I, I may be a little extreme by saying this, but I believe if, if a man, woman, whatever, can rape an animal, what, what else are they capable of, you know? I, Kids, yeah. you know, adults, what it, it just opens up a whole, a whole discussion on and I think it's a good point because, yeah, I, I think that's a very good point because um, you you don't know and 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 it, and it is abuse and there's definitely something wrong there. So you don't, you know, and I, I get your point and I definitely don't disagree with you. I think that's probably a really good point. You made another good point before the show, and. Um, we talked about whether or not we were going to talk about it on air, but it really, it, it really caught me off guard, and I, I want to talk about it for for the rest of this segment. So you gave me a statistic. Uh, what was? 
tell us what that was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. The and the, this is a statistic that I've got. But Priscilla has uh, studied this and been deep into this and looked into it and and done polls and the whole nine yards with this. And she has come to find out that 75% of zoophiles are women, which is, which is shocking to me. Right. And it's not their cattle. It's, or their sheep. It's their pets. Yeah. It's, it's, it's their dog. Uh, A single woman living with her, with her dog and she has sex with her dog. I mean, and it's, this it's is such, all... it's such a touchy subject, you know, and, and but it's happening. And, and it's horrible. I know that is. this is where I get, I start, I'm, I'll start getting emotional if we talk about it too much. But the, uh, the other thing was that they put it, then put it on the internet. Yeah. Yeah, we we I could we have paste bins of hundreds of zoophile sites, and uh, I was I was kind of kicking one around the other day called uh, I'm not even going to say the name of it, but I was kicking I was kicking a couple of their sites around the other day just to aggravate. And, uh, they it, it's 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 nine times out of ten what you see on these sites are women performing whatever sexual act you can imagine with an animal. So. Okay, okay, now it's the and this is what I find so incredible. So it's you know laws are messed up, so I can't nothing that you would tell me about the laws in this country and and how they are are messed up from state to state would really surprise me but that right. surprised me of everything that mm-hmm. I've heard about this that surprised me that it's th- that many women and their pets and they're putting mm-hmm. it on websites and do we have do we have any idea how many people there are has Priscilla found a number for how many people there are actually engaging in this? I, I don't know. I would have to talk to her with that, about yeah. that, but yeah. but you can you can go to these sites and and scroll through for two hours and never see the same girl twice. Oh so. no! Yeah, and you can go to those sites because that's <laughs> that's what you I'll, do. I'll pass. I'll pass. That, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I certainly don't recommend it. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So, what else do you want to tell us in the next minute and a half or so about what you guys are going to be doing and how we can how we can find you and how people can get involved? I mean, obviously, that, they can. They if they see you engaging their state legislature, they can pick up the phone and make a phone call. Exactly, exactly. And as much, and like I said, we're going to work on Texas right now. Mm-hmm. So anybody out there from Texas, follow us, uh, you know, help us out, call your congressmen, call your senators, and, mm-hmm. and tell them that you, you, you're not going to stand for this in your state. Right. Find out Texas if you're one of them. to be a great state, you know, and they, they're they're lax on this law, which I think is pretty disgusting. Right, and uh, and you, you know it's it, it's weird. You wouldn't know why on earth they wouldn't uh, they wouldn't have a law, and maybe it's never a problem, or they don't sit, consider it a problem. But obviously, there's enough going on, and people are using the fact that this hasn't been outlawed in some in some in every state they're using that to their benefit so something has to be done find out if people can also find out if they're one of the eight just go ahead and start blowing up those phones at the capitol yeah yeah Yeah, that's not gonna hurt yeah Yeah. (laughs) and we'll we'll be tweeting out all the states here within the next couple days but but like i said we're we're trying to do the one state at a time thing you know so 
so we can concentrate uh, solely on that and not be spread out throughout these eight states trying to, you know, coordinate too many, too much at once, I guess. Right. I think one at a time is a great approach. I think you'll probably get way more out of it that way if you just hammer one at a time and uh, get the laws changed. I, I do think, though, that we should... There, on some level, we should be happy that there's only eight states that are stupid enough to have not yeah. outlawed this yet. So, yeah, <laughs> and and there's been a few states within the last few years that have that have changed the laws. Alabama's one, as a matter of fact, they outlawed it a couple of years ago. So that's good. I mean, it's it's there. They just need to. I would think it would pre, be a pretty unanimous vote to outlaw bestiality. Yes, and if you can get it, it to the floor. It, 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 yeah, and it could be passed pretty pretty quickly through because nobody's going to want to talk about it. They're going to want to, yeah, let's get this passed and get it out of here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> let's just not have a hearing on it. Yeah, exa- All right. exactly. All right. Well, we're going to, go into a break but we appreciate you coming on and uh letting us know about this and give us the hashtag and um the twitter address for the op absolutely. again absolutely it's uh at anani op beast or you can follow at priscilla laker v so like the lakers but with the v on the end yeah, yeah. Yep. And yeah. you can uh, you can find him on Committee's Timeline, too, because so, he's got some stuff out there about it. You guys have all been tweeting, and we're behind you. We're going to help you out with this as much as we can, awesome. because um, a little shame to say that I didn't know quite as much about it as I wish I had until you guys started this, and yeah. I've definitely learned a lot. So um, right. thanks for joining us. We're going to go into a real quick break, and uh, Committee, we'll talk to you later. We'll see you on Twitter. All right, thanks a lot for having me. Take care. And this is Stacy. Join us Tuesday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, for Game On. Remember, lock up the children and the old folks. Game On, the home of conservative conservative. Where no one is safe, no one is spared, not even the hosts. Oh, like that was supposed a to be a spin, spin cycle. cycle. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. We love you anyway. Right round, baby. Self right round. Anyway. Ebola radio strikes again. <laughs> anyway. Anybody uh, see the host monkey? Today. Where's the host monkey? Where's the host monkey? For God's sake, I need an antidote. Just anyway, do your random. Let's pop out of the second. <laughs> Find us on Twitter at JD and Stacy. You're listening to K98talk.com. I've seen this happen before. Hey, I love my new bumpers. I'm going to give a shout out to Tennessee Jed. That is Darkness Abounds. That is a fabulous song. It's probably my 
favorite on his new CD, and it is available on iTunes now. Tennessee Jed. You, are you still with me, Doc? I'm here. Absolutely. I'm, I'm disgusted, but I'm still here. I know. Yeah, that was, and I, I debated about whether to open or close the show with that segment, and I just wanted to open, get it out of the way. It's really important, and you, I wanted to give the op some support, but preparing for it and, you know, and doing the segment, it's not even my favorite ghost sex segment I've ever done. Here's Dr. Ed's advice if you do that again. Uh, do it at the end of the show and release me from my commitment to be on the radio with you so I can not have to hear this. I just, I can't, I can't believe uh, that there are people that do that. I remember when I was becoming a federal agent, we had to watch uh, pedophilia and look at pedophilia. And I remember they said, you have to be exposed to it to some degree. Uh, and then all the women walked out. They were, they, they flipped one page, they left. It was just disgusting. And so uh, I, I can't believe people do that, but you know, people are, are satanic. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and I think that comedian made a really good point when he said, you know, if people will do, do that, how to, how do we know what else they will or won't do? And I think that's a really good point. So, you yeah. know, it's it's just like any criminal element as as far as I'm concerned, whether or not it's specifically outlawed in a state or not, you know, it it obviously should be. So are we are we going to get to some some stuff uh, that will be invigorating for the audience? Like we're going to move on. Yeah, we're going to move on to to national security and uh, just okay. remind everybody to get out there and support Op Beast because they they do um, a lot of great work against animal cruelty and this one is really important. So let's move on to the State of the Union and lack the lack thereof. We're writing ISIS. So, I went back to the 2015 State of the Union, Doc, and I listened to about a minute and a half or so of clips um, or of, of content from the President, and he said more in that minute and a half on ISIS last year than he said the entire speech, which he peppered it here and there in this speech. It was really kind of hard to to pull clips out, but um, the he he said absolutely nothing last night except that uh, over the past seven years I've done these three very minor inconsequent inconsequential things, and I'm still riding that horse off into the sunset, evidently, and we'll listen to the clip where he says them. But you he know did, me, there's... I referred to that as the state, not the state of the union, but the state of delusion or the state of denial. Obama, and you know this, Lou, is completely out of touch with traditional American values and the real life problems that we face individually and as a nation. Yeah, absolutely. It, for ISIS to be such a great threat and to have, you know, a couple of minutes and last year's State of the Union, uh, less than that in this year's State of the Union, to not recognize any of the failures or challenges or anything, but just kind of smooth it over like everything is great and, oh, we'll get to all of you eventually, which was the, let's listen to the clip okay, and listen to this because basically he said, I'm great and just wait, I'll get to the rest of you. This is what he took about a minute to say. But the American people should know that with or without congressional action, ISIL will learn the same lessons as terrorists before them. If you doubt America's commitment or mine to see that justice is done, just ask Osama bin Laden. Ask Ask the leader of al-Qaeda in Yemen, who was taken out last year, or the perpetrator of the Benghazi attacks, who sits in a prison cell. 
When you come after Americans, we go after you. And it may take time, but we have long memories, and our reach has no limits. Okay, and that was immediately after. he Basically, he said, if you want a war on ISIS, have Congress declare war. He basically just tossed to Congress right before he said that. I didn't realize till just now that there was only one perpetrator of the Benghazi uh, attack. He said the the perpetrator of Benghazi is in jail. The perpetrator. One guy. One guy. I, is he talking about the guy that made the video? It, probably. <laughs> yes, that's a great point. I, uh, who is he talking about? Just but delusional. just ask him. Yeah, exactly. But just ask him. He, he, you know, we've got real problems, uh, national security, which is your bailiwick and mine as well, but the economy, our, our military, immigration, unfettered immigration, global warming is not one of those. Oh, that's, that's what not, he wanted to talk about, though. That's what all the clips were about today, too. It was hard to find a national security clip because he spent so little time talking about it. Uh, now, well, can I blame him? I mean, our, our final segment, our last segment is going to be about why I can't really blame him for not wanting to talk about national security because at the time he was giving the speech, we had sailors sitting in, you know, wherever, some cell in Iran. I, you know, if I was one of his advisors, I would tell him this. Mr. Obama, just one time, please stand up with some guts and protect this country. Act like an American, you knucklehead. Ah, uh, that's why you would never be his advisor. Uh, well, I, I, he needs to hear that. Is there he any does. way that Rick Robinson can make sure he hears that segment? Uh, yeah, well, we, yeah, I'm sure. He doesn't watch Fox News. He's not listening to K98 talk. Oh, well. That's pretty much a guarantee. But um, the uh, I, I, I think that the, the fact that he said so little about it and what he did say say about it was to claim failures as victories. Yeah, exactly. The nerve of bringing up Benghazi at all. I think that took a lot of nerve. Well, he knows there's 47% of the people that believe anything he, that, that spouts out of his mouth or Hillary's mouth. And we talked about this offline. They, I, you, I'm gonna, here's a drinking word, folks, from Dr. A. They are mind-raped. They desperately want to believe anything that comes out of the mouth of these lefty uh, leaders. And nothing can be further than, from the truth. Uh, problem is, you've got a bunch of people on the right, these rhinos, that they are the same way. They just want to build up government in their mold, their model, not in the, the leftist model. And those people have to go, too, just as much as the people on the left have to go. The ones that are more dangerous are the ones on the left, obviously. Uh, but I, you know, it just it just nerves me to no end to listen to the things that come out of their mouths and realize, Lou, that there are people out there that are so stupid that they believe what they're being told by these demagogues. They, and then there are actually a lot of people that believe them, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you're yep, right. Exactly. So we want our last segment to be nice and long. Because we're gonna, we've got a lot to talk about with the sailors, and there was breaking, changing news today. And uh, for some reason, the Iranians feel it necessary to continue to scold us on the matter and make crazy comments. And uh, there's just really a lot to talk about. So we're gonna take another quick break. We're gonna come back and make the last segment a long segment. We'll be right back. Or I think we'll be right back. There we are. We'll be right back. I looked all over, so how can it be? Here comes the wrecking ball. Swinging at me. K98 Talk is continuing to expand its lineup. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98 FM, 
We give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at advertise at k98talk.org. All right, that was some more from Tennessee Jed, and uh, I'm going to keep plugging him because he's my friend, and he's a great guy. You with me, Excellent. Doc? Excellent. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, it's good music. So um, let's get into this thing with the sailors, and let's start from the beginning. So it's they've told they've said several different things. The, Iran- the Iranians, I think, initially said that there was engine trouble. Now, today, we hear from the Pentagon that there was navigational problems. Tell us what really happened, Doc. All right. I, I got an uh, email from a friend of mine who is a former Navy SEAL officer. And let me tell you what this thing says. He says, I rarely pull out my dusty old trident. That's what they wear on their, their uniform. But in this case, Dr. A, here goes. I was a Navy SEAL, as you know, officer in the 1980s, and this kind of operation, transiting small boats in foreign waters, was our bread and butter. Today, these boats both not only have radar, but multiple GPS devices, including things like chart plotters that place your boat's icon right on the chart. The claim, Dr. A, by Iran, that the U.S. Navy boats strayed into Iranian waters is complete. Crap. I'll change the word in crap. For Insert an Navy water, SEAL word. <laughs> yeah, I will get it. For an open water transit between nations, <clears throat> the course is studied and planned in advance, well in advance, by the leaders of the Riverine Squadron, with specific attention given to staying wide and clear of any hostile nation's claimed territorial waters. The boats are given a complete mechanical check before their departure. And they have sufficient fuel to accomplish their mission plus extra. If for some unexplainable and rare circumstance, one boat breaks down, the other would simply tow it. That's why they have two boats that go on these types of trips and not just one. It's called self-rescue and it's part of the SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. This entire situation is in my area of expertise, Dr. A. I can state with complete confidence that both Iran and our own State Department, are lying to the American people. The boats did not, did not enter Iranian waters. They were overtaken in international waters by several Iranian patrol boats that were so superior in both speed and firepower that it became a hands-up, don't-shoot situation with automatic weapons, cannons, the 40 40 millimeters and the 76 millimeter range pointed at them point blank. Surrender, hands up, or be blown out of the water. I assume that the Iranians had an English speaker on a a loudspeaker to make this demand. This takedown was no accident or coincidence, Dr. Arrington. It was a planned slap across America's face for Barack Obama and the Congress. Just watch. The released sailors will be ordered not to say a word about the incident. And the Iranians will have taken every GPS device, chart plotter, etc. off of the boats so they will not be able to prove where they were and when they were taken. The strayed into Iranian water story being put out by Iran and our, our groveling and appeasing State Department is utter and complete BS from one end to the other, Lou. Uh, that's the end. Utter BS that's- from one end to the other. Yeah, that's what happened. Well... And I was really, and I know that it was uh, probably just propaganda from the Ar- Iranians, but, and I, I hated to see it, and I never like to see it. The last thing I ever want to see ever again, even though I know I will, is an American service member on their knees with their hands behind their back, or behind their head. 
That was and, disgusting. And I, had, I told the, you offline I had to pull off the road because I've been involved in this. I've been to Sears School. I've been uh, fighting the Iranians since the uh, time they had those uh, hostages that the uh, supposed students took. So I, I'm pretty well versed in what's going on here. And to see that and to see that young woman forced to put that uh, hijab or she had to put on her, her head uh, unnerved me to no end. I was pissed as a uh, naval aviator to attack pilot can be, as pissed as I can be. Yes, but I was glad that the video got leaked and the video went out there so that every American can see what Iran actually did. Because the the news reports and the way that the administration talks about it, uh, it sounds like, oh, you know, well, they kind of towed us in because we were having engine trouble and then sent us home. That's not what happened. They took those boats by force. Absolutely. And it's clear and, and in the when, video. When, you, when, you saw, when I watched the one video where they had that uh, young, he was probably a lieutenant, that was the senior uh, afloat captain of, of the two boats there. Mm-hmm. When I saw him give his confession, uh, it took me right back to Sear School when I went through Sear School and that type of training. Right. Uh, so for those who don't know what Sear School is, it's, it's basically training to become a POW. And what they teach you there is many things, um, but what they teach you is what you can say and do while you're in enemy hands as a POW. You're only supposed to give the enemy your name, rank, and serial number until you are broken by the interrogation techniques, whatever they may be, or if you have a shipmate of yours that is put under extreme duress or is under imminent threat of death or uh, severe bodily harm, then you can give some information. And so when I saw that uh, young sailor uh, officer giving that confession, and I saw his eyes and his body language. I knew that it was given under duress. Nothing he said was true, Lou. Nothing. And because they teach you to do it a certain way so that people know that you're under duress, right? Well, it's, it's body language. It's your eye movements. Mm-hmm. Uh, during Vietnam, they had guys that would actually, uh, back then we had to know Morse code. I don't know if they have to know Morse code now, but he was actually uh, typing out SOS with his eyes in Morse code while he was given his confession on camera there in Vietnam at the Hanoi Hilton. And so I, I, what I saw was a young officer under extreme duress. They could have had uh, one of his compadres off in one corner behind the video camera saying, okay, you respond this way to these questions or we will put a bullet in this kid's head. Mm-hmm. And I, I wouldn't put it above them to do that or you know, beneath them to do that. I don't trust the Iranians one bit. I don't trust Valerie Jarrett one bit. I don't trust Obama one bit because yeah. I know where they're – uh, loyalties lie, and it ain't the United States of America, traditional American values, I guarantee you that. Lou. So let's say this, since you, since you brought that up. It is, it's clear, people will recognize very quickly that it's scary times, that there's a lot going on, that there's unrest in the Middle East, but historically, at, for the last hundred years, whatever the American president does, has more to do with global security and the way people behave and whether or not they behave than any other leader on earth. So the Japanese uh, prime minister can do whatever the heck he wants to. It's not going to affect China at all. However, who is president of the United States of America does affect the way that China behaves. So when you look around the world and you see all the unrest and it looks scary You can look at the man in the White House, the man in the Oval Office, as to why things might be scary. It's always scarier when we have a weak president. And it's not just because we have a weak president. It's because other nation states misbehave. The the, uh, international community does, listen to me people, the international community does not respect a Democrat in the White House and when Ronald Reagan was there, he was mostly concerned with the, the safety and security of the people of the United States of America. And yes, that meant he had to do certain things on the international stage to thwart and discourage those other international actors from behaving in certain ways that would jeopardize the United States of America and our people. 
So the, the number one uh, thing they're worried about is our, it should be worried about, I don't think Barack Obama is, is worried about the safety, security, and longevity of the United States of America as a free nation and our people. But, of course, that does mean they have to be worried about uh, what other uh, international actors are doing or are not doing. And so that is a correlation, is a good, is a good analogy there. Yeah, and but this, what, this what the, international actors are, are doing or not doing is directly related to the strength of that person in the White House. If they're a strong leader, there's less happening. If they're a weak leader, there's more happening. Well, I, you know, and, and that thing on the a clip that I read from the, uh, my buddy, this, the uh, Riverine uh, SEAL guy, uh, I'm not sure they were overpowered by uh, a stronger set of boats. What I think happened was they were constricted by Mr. Obama's rules of engagement that basically said, you ain't doing nothing. You ain't firing. You're not doing a thing. That's Let right. Let them take you. Now, let's talk about that for a second because we've talked about the rules of engagement. We're going to get to measure short of war in just a second, but we've got time. So we've talked a lot about the rules of engagement being dangerous for the men that are over there and being set up so that they would never win a war. It's basically v- Vietnam 2.0. Correct. Yes. So what happens to uh, any service member who breaks those rules of engagement. I know what the answer is because it happened not too long ago. Yeah, he, he spends a lot of time in Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. Exactly. So he's disciplined. He's court-martialed. He's put in the brig. Right. He did right. Any of those things that could happen, there, that there, there's real legal consequences for a, a uh, service member that breaks the rules of engagement. Uh, exactly, but if you have rules of engagement that are ridiculous like we have right now, uh, I think the guy that, that imposes those rules of engagement on you should be in prison, and then that would be Mr. Obama well, and I think through that the, that's, the Pentagon. Right, I think that's correct too, but that's not what they get, did to the guy in Afghanistan, because speaking of Fort Leavenworth, I believe that's where he is. That's exactly where he is. Yeah, exactly. So... They don't really have a choice, so think about that in context. Let's put those two things together. It doesn't make sense that they were off course. It doesn't make sense that they would surrender so easily, except for the fact that they've been given these rules of engagement, that they can't engage the enemy, even when they come into international waters and try to to take your boat. And let's not forget that we might have gotten the sailors back, and God bless them, glad we did, but Iran still got the boats and the tech. This I told you uh, earlier that the they were seized in international waters. To uh, when did it happen? Right there before the state of delusion, the state of denial that Obama gave in the joint session of Congress. They did this to embarrass Obama and then America and the Congress. They're they're sending a signal to the Congress saying you better not screw with that hundred and fifty billion dollars that we're going to get because of the Iran nuclear deal. You better not do that. This you know what, Lou? This is a perfect example of why the left should never ever be in charge of anything, especially the military. Uh, this I promise you, if we had a President uh, uh, Cruz or Stacey, forgive me, President Trump, uh, they'd give them or a President Arrington. Uh, I would give them 10 minutes. you got 10 minutes to release those sailors, or I'm going to come in with my bombers, and I'm going to start leveling government buildings and ships in Tehran and in the, the waters off of Iran. And, and oil wells. you have a week, go ahead. And oil wells. I'm going to take out that? every well you have. Well, wait, I would do that. When, when you have a weak uh, president uh, and uh, a weak uh, secretary of state, and they disarm uh, our military... The enemy knows this. Putin knows this. Putin's laughing at us. What do you think would have happened if these were Russian ships that got seized? Answer that question, Lou. Oh, he's already talked about nuking people for less than that. He wants to nuke ISIS. Yeah. Yeah. So. Again, there was a very good reason, strategic reason, why the Islamic State of Iran, those uh, uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, kidnapped these 10 U.S. sailors Tuesday right before... Obama made his worthless uh, speech to the American people. Again, it was to embarrass, embarrass him, and it worked. And then, against the Geneva Convention, they released these pictures of our sailors uh, with their hands uh, on their heads, uh, like the hostages uh, and POWs that they were at the time. That was meant to embarrass the greatest military on the face of the planet. And uh, Iran 
Uh, they, they, I'm telling you right, right now, they couldn't wait to release these images uh, and to have us be totally humiliated. And so what, what did John Kerry, our Secretary of Statism, uh, say? He said he wanted to thank the Iranian authorities for their cooperation and quick response. This could have, could have a situation like this four years ago could have got out of hand. Let me just tell you something about Mr. Kerry. He doesn't know his rear end from a good grade of peanut butter, as my dad used to say. He says he was a sailor. He served in the, in the uh, Navy. Uh, that is sort of limitedly true. He ran out of exemptions for education. So he had to join during the Vietnam War, and he, he looked and found the easiest way out where they had the least amount of combat, and that was those riverine boats, those fast boats that he was part of. He's another coward that has taken advantage of, of wearing the uniform of this country. Another coward. Trust me on this, people, on this one subject. <laughs> on this one and about two dozen others. So, and I don't disagree with you about Carrie. Some of, There's a lot of guys, like, and I, I, not really a lot of guys, but there, there are a lot of guys in government like him, I think, that uh, might have done what they did, do, done their service, for, you know, not so noble reasons, and I think they show that over time. That's like an assessment that I let guys like you make, and I don't make myself yeah. yet. So it's one thing for you well, to say yeah. it, right? Right, yeah, and I'm telling you the truth, because yeah, I've been there, I've done it, and I was trained to do it and, and did it in real life. And just to give a little, add a little levity to your show, uh, my SEER training, uh, my POW training, comes in very handy, Lou, when you and I are having lunch with Miss Stacy, I only give up name and serial number <laughs> to her because I know she'll she'll confront me and you know does what she does to. Uh, and what's ironic about Sweet. Iran? If you look at what Iran has done as far as provocations in the last I don't know four, five, six months, um, they have they sealed that nuclear deal, which was to their in their favor completely. This is all crap. Mm-hmm. They kept they still are keeping four Americans in prison. Uh, they uh, still maintain the largest uh, st- the state of sponsor uh, of terrorism in the world. They repeatedly violate uh, UN sanctions. Uh, they fired missiles right near the uh, carrier USS uh, Harry S. Truman. Uh, and then they took these 10 uh, sailors captive to embarrass the United States. So Iran is not our friend. Valerie Jarrett is not our friend and I, I'm sorry if I'm bursting your bubble, people out there, but she's not. She is a Shiite Muslim. Now, that brings me to what I was have been chomping at the bit to talk about and uh, brought up a little bit Tuesday night in our, our post-SOTU panel. And and it's, it's really killing me uh, that I haven't gotten a chance to really talk about this because we're going to dive into it a little bit deep. So, there are a lot of ways to antagonize and to saber rattle and to um, compete with uh, your your adversaries on the international stage without an actual declaration or an actual act of war or something that's really considered an act of war. Now, you can, al- you can always debate and there's always debate over what is an actual act of war and what is not an act of war and... It's been that way since time began. But if it's not a real act of war, or if there's some debate about it, it's typically called a measure short of war. But what is important to understand is that a measure short of war is an antagonistic act nonetheless. That's correct. That's correct. And it's meant to it's meant to antagonize. I believe because of some of their recent actions, I believe that Iran is actually trying to get us to escalate or trying to gin up some discourse for the fact that the American government hasn't escalated their campaign against ISIS and uh, their involvement in the Middle East. I think that Iran would love nothing more than to see us completely entangled in what's going on in the Middle East right now. And I think that's why the missiles uh, across the bow, basically, of the Truman, and that's why they picked up 
these uh, sailors on a bogus, you drifted into our waters allegation. These are the, the, these are the types of measures short of war that we've seen throughout history. They happened over and over and over again during uh, the Vietnamese War, the war in Vietnam. And how you respond to them is critical. And to capitulate, to apologize, and then to allow today Iran to talk about how our sailors were going to be scolded over what they did wrong with no response whatsoever is basically, well, I guess we've already, Kamini already said balls on the air one time tonight. We handed them our balls on a silver platter. Well, we didn't. Barack Obama and uh, he Kerry did and, exactly, and, 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 and so did Mrs. Clinton and uh, Michelle. For yeah. us, but our collective kahunas yeah. were handed to Iran on a silver platter. And there's still about forty-seven uh, percent of the people in this country that that's not true for. That we are still true uh, conservative American patriots. We believe in the Constitution, and we believe in traditional American principles and values. And and uh, the the uh, mix of people that are that way versus people that used to back when the country was created that sided with the king uh, is pretty much about the same. Uh, maybe maybe forty forty back then and twenty they didn't really care about anything. So the country's been this way from the beginning. The, the, the founding fathers knew that, uh, and that's why they created the type of power structure that they invented uh, with the uh, constitution. And the executive branch, the presidency, which was an invention that they, they created. Uh, so they knew this. And it's always going to be hard to get things done in the United States of America because you've got uh, an equal number of people on one side that they are going to fight the people on the other side. It's always going to be that way. And kind of what's in the middle is what's going to sway one way or the other unless you can get a situation where there's just no choice. They, they bomb the United States of America at Pearl Harbor or downtown Manhattan. And then for a temporary period of time, all the United, most of the people in the United States are on board for that one mission. We're going to destroy Jap- Japan, destroy Germany, that sort of stuff. Something's going to happen, Lou, probably before this knucklehead leaves uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue that's going to galvanize 65, 68% of the people uh, on a mission to go out and, and make these people stop doing what they're doing, and it's going to happen. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but something's going to happen, Lou. It's going to be heinous, and it's going to galvanize about 68% of us to go take care of this situation. You watch and wait and see. Dr. One day, the truth. what all I want is for one day for the uh, dum-dums to realize that every time they forget that this is what happens, it happens again. I don't want that horrible thing to happen to galvanize people, but it's going to happen because Absolutely. people forget. And we're, I always say we're myopic, and that doesn't mean we're uh, our eyes. It means we're short-sighted in memory. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that can be good, and that can be bad. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, it's time to say good night. Why don't you plug our Sunday show? We have a Sunday show. Oh yeah, yeah. it's uh, Office Hours with Doctor A, which uh, Lou produces, and uh, we're going to do this uh, Sunday at uh, noon, right after JD and Stacy get through with their show, uh, uh, Bloody Mirrors in Broad Streets. And for the next two weeks, we're going to do Sheep, Wolves, and Sheep Dogs. It's a two-part series, and we're going to get through that and make sure the audio is really good because people need to hear this uh, because, I tell you what, the sheepdogs are now in more, we're in more dire necessity of having them save this country than ever before. And I'm sure Ron in the uh, romper room and Tina Hi, and uh, her husband Slick are, are, are <laughs> concurring with this assessment. Yes, absolutely. They are our sheepdogs. We are so glad you joined us this Thursday. We'll be back here Thursday night as well at 8 p.m., and uh, Dr. A, you'll be with me next week as, re- as well, right? All right. We'll see you then. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.
If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. 